Our first speaker is Anna Lareira uh, from Kent University, and she will speak about ratio asymptotic for symmetric multiple orthogonal polynomials. Anna, please. Uh, спасибо. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, привет, Sochi, and um, so it's uh, very nice to be here uh, and that you went ahead with this um, conference. It's a great pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Um, COVID uh, presented a lot of uh, uh, challenges to a lot of people, but at least it, uh, uh, it helps to be here, especially for those who are carrying responsibilities. Anyway, let's go back to business. And so, so this is a joint work uh, with uh, Walter Van Asse, uh, he's in the audience and, um, and a friend. Uh, he has been uh, really supportive and he has been uh, quite uh, nice in understanding that uh, this uh, research that I'm about to present uh, is an overdue research and um, uh, but still, nevertheless, uh, quite interesting, I think. So we, we are going to talk, I'm going to talk about uh, ratio asymptotics for uh, symmetric uh, multiple orthogonal polynomials. So today and yesterday, we've heard a few talks on uh, multiple orthogonal polynomial, polynomials, typically uh, Nikitian systems. And, um, and here it will come an example of an Nikitian system too. Um, but nevertheless, the, the goal um, of this uh, talk is uh, to talk about uh, monic polynomial sequences satisfying a three-term recurrence relation. Uh, but this three-term recurrence relation is of higher order. In this case, we have of order r plus one, r an integer. And of course, it starts uh, here in this case, uh, as we will see, these are symmetric. Uh, they are r, fold, r plus one fold symmetric. We'll come to that. And so, um, and the uh, initial uh, terms are these uh, are, the, um, are, are given by x to the power j. Um, the assumptions we will make uh, um, is that uh, all these gammas uh, are positive, and uh, that uh, they have uh, they are asymptotically uh, periodic. Uh, but we are we are not going to assume they are bounded. Um, in fact, we are going to assume that they grow at uh, um, n to the alpha, but then these alpha case, uh, they will uh, be, we assume them to be different, um, and so, so there will be uh, r plus one um, alpha case. So these are the assumptions, and so the discussion will be on the ratio asymptotic for consecutive polynomials. Of course, it will involve as well, um, not consecutive, but uh, uh, our, um, our terms apart. And uh, then this will move on to a zero limiting distribution of the uh, uh, regarding these polynomial sets. Um, we will end with uh, uh, analyzing an example or with two measures. Um, it, I shall say that there's no assumption that this is a Nikitian system, uh, though um, the example coming up is an example of a Nikitian. And so, um, so a bit of um, overview of uh, uh, research that has been done in the past um, for this um, uh, type of problems. Um, it has been already covered in uh, previous talks. Uh, uh, Kaliagin uh, mentioned it earlier on yesterday. And so uh, this morning uh, as well, uh, some people did. So um, regarding this uh, recurrence, the, this um, problem here, um, then um, it has been done some research assuming in a, a wonderful paper <clears throat> by Abdikarev, uh, Kaliagin and uh, Jeanette Van Nyskem, um, uh, when first it was assumed that the coefficients were uh, constant and uh, then with L1 perturbations uh, um, of the coefficients. In any of these cases, um, they were not assumed to be uh, periodic. So they, they were all taking the same limit. Uh, and then um, uh, later on, uh, it has been uh, done uh, several works uh, by uh, many people. Uh, Guillermo, uh, sorry, Lopez, uh, Lagomazino, Lopez Garcia, Delvo, uh, Minha Diaz, and many others. And I apologize if I missed someone. Um, but uh, it has been uh, looked into the case of uh, periodic uh, constant coefficients and, and uh, some L1 perturbation of those constant coefficients. 
Uh, typically, it was linked to um, Nikishin systems and some, uh, also linked to the problem. It has been analyzed uh, as some um, uh, multiple orthogonal polynomial families with unbranded supports uh, as well by uh, my friend uh, Vanasse, uh, Nurchel, and Kussmann, uh, two Kussmanns actually. And um, anyway, um, the goal here, as I said, uh, the only assum assumption we are making is that these gammas are positive and that uh, um, they, uh, uh, they uh, have a certain um, period, uh, they are asymptotically periodic. Um, okay, and uh, unbounded. As we will see, this unbounded part so will have an impact on the support. Of course, the, the support will be unbounded as well. So here, um, assume, so as I said, so we are dealing with R plus one fold symmetric sequences. In some, um, in some papers, this was uh, um, named as uh, R plus one symmetric. Um, uh, uh sequences and so um, but we call it in this form um and uh, i forgot to mention that the negation systems uh, that were mentioned in uh, in this paper for example uh they were um typically um called as uh, uh, polynomials in a star and it makes all sense to call it as such because the support as we will see it lives in a star on the complex plane Okay, so um, this means that uh, the sequence satisfies uh, uh, R plus one fold symmetry, meaning that uh, we can um, uh, um, express um, the uh, every term in um, mod K um, in terms of another sequence uh, that let us denote like this. We are not going exactly to use this one, um, but um, for completion, I'm mentioning it here. It turns out that the, this PMJ sequence, uh, they are also, um, they also satisfy a higher order recurrence relation. And so of course, uh, because of this, uh, they are multiple orthogonal polynomials or better to on the step line or near the diagonal, better to call them are also known as um, the R orthogonal polynomials. I'll come to that in a moment, but um, there's obviously a, a, a natural connection um, that goes uh, beyond. But our focus is on the symmetric for now. And so, um, okay, so uh, regarding uh, the symmetric uh, uh, sequence, so if we have uh, a polynomial sequence satisfying this recurrence relation, then if and only if uh, there, we, there exists uh, measures, uh, R measures, and such that, um, uh, such that, oh, there's a mistake here, a typo, sorry. Um, uh, such that um, should be a J. Um, anyway, such that uh, um, they satisfy the R orthogonality conditions. And these R orthogonality conditions are the multiple orthogonality conditions uh, near the step line. I will come to that. And the support is uh, on a star in the complex plane or in a subset of um, uh, this uh, star on the complex plane as I'm on, on the rays in the complex plane equidistributed. Um, so they, the measures, they have a common support um, and so it is in that subset. This uh, is a nice result uh, due to Abdikarev and some Kaliagin and Shanet van Isgem. Also uh, a bit of combined uh, with some uh, results of uh, Maroni um, uh, using linear functionals. Um, okay. So um, again, uh, regarding, as I was saying, this is a part of a subset on the multiple orthogonal polynomials. And um, so um, I'm, I'm uh, quite fortunate because a lot of people already talked about uh, multiple orthogonal polynomials. So I don't have to uh, spend much time um, discussing this. But anyway, we can see that a polynomial sequence uh, on a single variable and uh, defined on a multi-index. And all these polynomials, they have degree, which uh, um, is the length of the multi-index. And, um, and there is a set, uh, so and they satisfy uh, orthogonality conditions that uh, are expressed here. Um, as I said, so we are focusing near the step line. What I mean with that is that uh, we are going to look at the indexes um, 
um, that uh, are near the diagonal. So we have J indexes here and R minus J indexes here. So we construct uh, the sequence from the origin, from the multiple uh, by uh, considering um, which comes as a polynomial of the degree Rn plus J. So the, it's on these ones that I'm going to discuss. Just to make it clear, uh, when we have two measures, um, the indexes I'm talking about are the ones that lie on this step line near the diagonal. And um, uh, of course, this, uh, uh, this means that these orthogonality uh, relations can be translated as, um, um, sorry, too fast, uh, as, um, as uh, um, the so-called uh, so uh, R orthogonality conditions. Uh, um, in, uh, in terms of sometimes use the letter D in several papers um, um, by other people, uh, including Mahoney and uh, uh, some of the Tunisian team, including, for example, uh, Ben Hamdam, Naila Ben Hamdam, um, who actually proved that uh, um, if we have a recurrence relation um, of this form, uh, then uh, it turns out that uh, um, the, the zeros um, will be uh, all rotated, uh, so they will be copies um, on the, the R plus one race. And, um, and then moreover, uh, most importantly for what we need uh, in the proof of our results is that uh, if um, all the zeros, each PN, sorry, uh, as uh, one zero at the origin and then M distinct zeros um, uh, in uh, um, of order uh, uh, m distinct zeros that we can order them uh, in this uh, uh, form. So here I'm looking at the zeros on the uh, the ones that lie on the on the real uh, line on the positive real line, and then the other ones will be uh, copies across um, across the uh, the other rays. Um, so the positive zeros also interlace, uh, meaning that between um, between uh, two um, po consecutive polynomials, there will be a zero of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, between two consecutive zeros of um, Pn plus one, there will be a zero of uh, uh, Pn and so on and so forth. Of course, here we could uh, continue with more animals with uh, the whole zoo, but uh, let's uh, not uh, do it for now. Uh, the idea is that we have uh, the interlacing property. And again, the only assumption that is uh, being made is that uh, the gamma, uh, this recurrence coefficient is a positive, nothing else. Um, so no use. Um, of course, the result doesn't uh, use the measures and so it's uh, purely uh, dependent on um, the recurrence relation. Uh, now, together with um, uh, Walter, uh, we, um, we showed that um, um, the uh, largest zero in absolute value actually uh, behaves um, in uh, this form under the assumption, of course, that uh, the, the gammas, the recurrence coefficients here, are um, periodically um, have this periodic asymptotic periodic behavior and they grow at the pace of n uh, to the gamma. Now, if we take alpha to be the minimum of uh, all these. Uh, um, coefficients, um, then it turns out that the zeros are bounded uh, uh, by this no, by this, uh, this um, expression right here, um, as n goes to infinity, of course. Um, I should uh, say that this is a, a straightforward extension um, uh, from uh, previous results that we've done for the case with two measures um, in, uh, in this uh, paper. And um, um, it turns out, well, to, to prove this, we just uh, look at the, the Hessenberg operator and then we uh, do a bit of uh, the spectral analysis there. And okay, so we have that the zeros interlace, we have an upper bound for the zeros and therefore we are in, uh, in good uh, condition uh, to um, go ahead uh, for the ratio asymptotics um, to the study of the ratio asymptotics. All right. Okay. And um, in uh, doing so, we have, uh, again, uh, we assume uh, the same assumptions, very simple, uh, nothing else than that. 
um, we consider um, a rescaling of the polynomial sequence and that uh, rescaling uh, as um, I'm going to call um, as QN. And now we are taking the double limit um, of, um, of uh, two consecutive polynomials and we have managed to prove uh, that that limit exists and um, goes to a function, an algebraic function, uh, phi k. And of course, we will have um, as many as um, uh, k's in uh, z are. Okay, so um, we have um, these many functions. It turns out that these functions uh, satisfy this uh, algebraic uh, uh, relation and uh, uh, we, uh, this uh, phi over here turns out to be uh, a product of all the phi's we have. So they are um, uh, phi k's, little phi and capital phi. Okay, um, with this, uh, of course, it's quite um, difficult to make any analysis, uh, but um, it turns out that uh, if we look at the ratio, uh, not between two consecutive polynomials, but with a gap uh, um, of our polynomials, then um, we have uh, that uh, this function phi, which, as I said, uh, was uh, precisely the product um, of all these uh, little phi's um, indexed uh, uh, with k, uh, then it turns out uh, that uh, this uh, phi function here satisfies uh, this um, uh, um, uh, algebraic equation. And the, of course, this uh, um, this limit holds uniformly on uh, all compact subsets of um, uh, the complex plane, except uh, the support, um, which is the star, uh, which is the stars. Oh, this is not a star, but doesn't matter. You get the idea. Not good at drawing. Anyway, um, so um, uh, it turns out uh, that we have this algebraic equation, and from this, uh, we can uh, uh, analyze it further. Before doing so, um, well, it still has a dependence on t, which we don't like as much. However, uh, we can remove that dependence on t. Uh, in fact, uh, it turns out uh, that um, uh, uh, phi uh, z of t can be written uh, in terms of um, uh, as uh, in this form, so satisfies this pro property, and this allows effectively us uh, to remove the dependence on t and to study further this uh, um, algebraic uh, function. Uh, furthermore, as it was uh, kind of expected, um, it satisfies some rotational invariance uh, uh, property. So here. Uh, omega is the uh, r plus one roots of uh, the unity. Um, the, and so, of course, it has this um, uh, some rotational invariance uh, uh, properties. And so, uh, now we are looking for the solution. And you can see that there's um, um, r plus one solutions. But what we are most interested in is in <clears throat> the solutions uh, that behaves as z to the power minus r, as z goes to infinity. The other solutions uh, will behave, um, will have this uh, uh, this behavior, which can be seen directly from the equation uh, here, or we can uh, write it in another form. But directly from here, uh, we can see that uh, um, uh, the solution we are looking for is uh, uh, this one with this asymptotic behavior. Anyway, and um, um, so. Uh, as uh, phi of z t uh, has this property, then uh, all we want to study is exactly this equation, and um, and we are looking, we are interested in the solution to this equation that behaves as uh, uh, one uh, um, that behaves as uh, sorry, wrong way uh, that uh, behaves as uh, z to um, uh, the power minus r one over z to the r. Okay, so um, the the inverse, um, uh, so we can um, just write uh, the function as z uh, times another function f of z. Um, then I won't enter into many details here because uh, it becomes um, a bit um, uh, formulae dependent. And um, so uh, phi, we can write it as the product of z times another function. And so, um, um, then we have uh, that uh, uh, this function f is an algebraic function over the r plus one and genus uh, zero. Uh, so the, this, uh, uh, this rational function um, 
uh, xi, xi here is uh, z to the r plus one, and for convenience, we are doing so. And the, this rational function gives uh, the composition of a conformal map um, of the sphere to the Riemann surface of this function and so the projection to the complex plane. And um, so if um, uh, then we need to analyze the discriminants, uh, but I will uh, leave it uh, for now. And um, based on the discriminant, we can um, then do further analysis. But for now, um, what uh, comes as a good uh, uh, result is that, uh, uh, well, regarding the, the um, asymptotic zero distribution, so we can see that the normalized, uh, uh, so we, we define by n, the normalized uh, zero counting uh, measure. And, um, and then we uh, can see that uh, it has some, um, and uh, I should have chosen a different notation here, but anyway, uh, it's the, the, the zero counting measure here. And in the limit, in the weak limit of measures, <coughs> the weak star limit of measures, then um, we managed to prove uh, that actually um, this, um, this uh, the, the, uh, the steel transform of um, the measure is given by um, the partial derivative of phi with respect to Z or the log derivative. Uh, the partial derivative with respect to z of log of um, phi of z. Um, okay, um, now let's move on to an ana analysis because uh, um, I'm quite uh, uh, due in time. The analysis of a particular case. This case uh, uh, came up um, in a, um, a paper with uh, uh, Van Asse. Um, and so um, it turns out, and what, what did this example come from? It comes from uh, the analysis of um, polynomials uh, that uh, satisfy the Hans property, namely that we have um, that uh, Pn plus one, uh, so the derivative uh, of Z is equal to, uh, sorry, uh, is again, the sequence of derivatives uh, is um, again, uh, um, two orthogonal or multiple orthogonal. Okay, so we assume Pn satisfies the recurrence relation, but as well that this sequence of uh, derivatives also satisfies uh, the recurrence relation. So this is the Han uh, property. Uh, and so it turns out that um, um, uh, one of the examples, they, they essentially are three families up to a linear transformation of the variable uh, that came uh, across. And, um, and it turns out that one of the examples that came up uh, is, um, has coefficients, uh, the recurrence coefficients that uh, behave uh, in this form. So as you can see, um, the asymptotic behavior is periodic. There will be two different, depending whether it is a, an even order term or an odd order term. And so here's a, um, a, a, pre, a plot of the zeros here. We can't zoom, see, but if we um, were able to zoom in, you would see that the zeros are uh, going pick up and down, up and down. So they don't, and then they grow towards this, uh, uh, this uh, line that is uh, taken from the upper bound uh, for the zeros we've done before. So here's a plot how the zeros are. They are all copies. Uh, these rays are copies of each other. And, um, and here with this uh, uh, assumption, so this is just a simple plot of uh, um, terms of order 34, it turns out that this sequence uh, is uh, satisfies orthogonality relations with respect to a symmetric uh, uh, three-fold symmetric measure. And um, that measure, um, well, it's uh, given by uh, in this form. Uh, and essentially, it, uh, uh, it is written in terms of um, a confluent type of geometric function. Um, and uh, it, um, uh, <coughs> it comes, uh, well, uh, the confluent type geometric function that I, uh, that I um, uh, recall it here, uh, also known as the Trikomi uh, function. Um, so it, it turns out that this is an example of an Ekishin system, and it has been um, proved so, uh, not exactly for uh, only this uh, one, but also for the components um, the, in this case, the cubic components or so the sequences that come out as um, the cubic, the composition of the original one. Um, it has been uh, proved uh, uh, by um, Aldo Lima and myself uh, that it forms an Ekishian system. 
Uh, and it has uh, good links uh, to continue uh, branch continued fractions. It has it is now being explored. Um, well, it has uh, started already with Alan Sokal, um, and so it is being explored by uh, Alan Sokal and Elder Lima. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of the analysis of um, of the of the ratio asymptotics here, um, what uh, it happens? Uh, so we have that uh, uh, again we are assuming that uh, this is the case uh, so we have uh, two alphas uh, alpha what not is equal to two ninths and uh, the other one equal to two over seven um, it turns uh, out that uh, uh, the this limit um, as i said exists and this uh, uh, function phi here uh, that we made this change of variable right uh, in this uh, uh, part and it turns out that this function f satisfies this algebraic equation, and um, and we have um, well and we can obviously uh, here we are assuming y to be z cubed. So it was the zeta before and uh, somehow um, mistakenly I should have kept the same variable, but doesn't matter. So we have um, this algebraic equation. Now this uh, this um, this algebraic equation actually has uh, two uh, three branch uh, points uh, one at zero uh, one at um, uh, this number here and uh, another one here and uh, it is uh, uh, is an algebraic uh, function that uh, lives on this uh, three sheeted uh, Riemann surface and um, uh, the the projections um, uh, on the each of the three sheets uh, corresponds to the solutions uh, f1 f2 and f3 so the three solutions again what we are interested is in this solution the solution that uh, sorry not this uh, this one so we are interested in the solution that be that um, behaves as one over y uh, rather than uh, the other ones Okay, so um, to say a bit more, so I think I'm uh, kind of, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, Lisa? Mr. Chairman, I think. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for the answer. Uh, a couple of minutes. Okay, you mean two? <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, so um, uh, then it turns out uh, that, uh, as I was saying, um, uh, we are uh, interested in this uh, solution, in this um, uh, particular, um, in this uh, branch. Um, and, um, and here we have uh, basically um, the, uh, the three sheets that are um, somehow glued together. Uh, along uh, the intervals and here is uh, y uh, zero to y one and uh, y two being these uh, y one and y two the the branch points um, uh, and so then if we look at the images uh, of um, these intervals um, it uh, we can see that um, uh, the oh there's a mistake here. Mm. So uh, that's um, the uh, mapping between uh, R on the now on the variable Y. Remember that uh, variable Y is Z cubed, but uh, we are focusing on Y uh, and the complex plane um, is given by uh, this um, uh, expression as it comes. Uh, so it gives this partition on the complex plane that uh, separates uh, precisely the, uh, the three um, uh, Riemann uh, 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 regions. Uh, anyway, uh, then uh, these hyperbolic curves that we are looking here are precisely the images of uh, uh, the interval 0, uh, uh, y1 and uh, uh, y2 to uh, 0, y2, the second branch point, which is negative. And uh, the, the points we are looking in the plots, um, they are precisely the images um, uh, of um, uh, zero, nine halves and uh, uh, 27 over two. And uh, then for the asymptotic uh, zero distribution, I'll report to you uh, later on, but um, um, we've looked also to another example is when the, the coefficients are not uh, periodic and that uh, has been already studied uh, by Lopez uh, Garcia and Lopez Lagomazino and uh, several others. I, I, I do apologize if I forgot anyone. And in the case of being um, uh, banded, um, also by Abtikarev and um, Kaliagin and 
and sad. Uh, okay, so uh, then um, at last, so the, the in the case um, in the case we have the same um, uh, recurrence coefficients, so they are not uh, periodic. Uh, then obviously this will link to the full Catalan. Um, uh, distribution, uh, or uh, more generally, to the uh, uh, Rani, uh, the uh, Rani numbers, or the moments linked to the Rani numbers. Uh, in this case, there's some deformation to be done, uh, but uh, is somehow related to, to that. And at last, uh, Spasiva and happy birthday! Uh, overdue happy birthday to Sasha. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sasha. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna. Any questions? Andre Martinez. Uh, so, Anna, you said that you will report on the asymptotic zero distribution later. It means you don't have the result, or it didn't fit in your uh, in your talk. It's the, the, the particular case you analyze here. It's one of the consequences of um, COVID. <laughs> It will come. It's not, uh, it needs to be checked. Maybe online questions? Yeah, I have one. Yes, yes, Arna. Uh, nice talk, Anna. Do you also have a vector equilibrium problem with the, or do you expect one? Yes, uh, it will be, um, it will probably come up one, but I, I didn't, we didn't do it yet. Uh, it's not finished. Will, so if I understand correctly, it will depend on these parameters, right? Alpha zero, alpha one. Mm -hmm. So it, they will come up in this problem as well then, most yes. likely. Okay, yes. I'm curious to see what it will be. Thank you, Arna. Uh, let's help Anna again. Thank you. <laughs>